Busta Rhymes recently received recognition for his contributions in the music industry. He was honored with the Lifetime Achievement Award at the Bietti Awards. Hey, I go to the, da the go to Daddy House studio and I'm fucking with Diddy and, 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 and Q-Tip and they was in there doing some shit. This award is given to individuals who have had a significant impact on culture and entertainment. Busta Rhymes was introduced by comedian Marlon Wayans, who praised him as a brilliant musical talent. I'm messing up, y'all messing up the bag. Y'all messing up the energy. I don't like when I talk to these dudes that run these streaming platforms. Busta Rhymes has been involved in many successful songs throughout his career. He became emotional when receiving the prestigious honor and expressed his gratitude. He acknowledged his black cultural heritage as a factor in his success and also criticized those who exploit young rappers. Busta Rhymes thanked his supporters and peers in the hip-hop community and jokingly commented on his affectionate nature. I love giving love, Busta Rhymes expressed. Sometimes I may come on too strong. I want to hug you tightly and hold your hand firmly. I speak from the heart, wanting you to truly understand my words. The most beautiful part about my life I've been truly nurtured by the, some of the most incredible women in the world. During his speech, he subtly took a jab at Diddy, known for not being generous. Busta Rhymes thanked those who have supported him throughout his career and urged fellow rappers to end their petty feuds. This rapper and him, they all in the room together. He emphasized that such conflicts harm the industry and turn off consumers. Busta Rhymes expressed admiration for both new and established artists, mentioning Ice Spice, Kwai LeRae, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, Wu-Tang, and Nas. He called for unity among artists and criticized the divisive narrative. He indirectly addressed Diddy's treatment of young artists, highlighting the exploitation faced by many black musicians in the industry. Busta Rhymes pointed out the need to support all black musicians instead of allowing identity politics to obscure the truth. Let me show you how to do this. And then the young boy said, of course, OG. You know, we salute you, OG. Kellis and Mays, who had experienced alleged exploitation under Pharrell and Diddy, recently shared their stories, shedding light on the actions of these successful black figures. During the 2020 Grammy Awards, Diddy spoke about artists taking control of the industry, despite previous controversies surrounding his business practices and artistic control. Back in 2005, Diddy faced criticism when Jay Atticus went on Hot 97 to complain about Diddy holding his publishing rights hostage. Beefs that we be doing in rap, this shit is... Y'all messing up, y'all messing up the bag. Y'all messing up the energy. Eventually, they resolved the issue and Diddy returned the rights. More recently, Pharrell lost a lawsuit to Marvin Gaye's estate over the similarities between his production on Robin Thicke's Blurred Lines and Gaye's Got to Give It Up. This legal battle sparked debate among music critics and fans. Some saw it as punishing inspiration, while others believed it exposed clear plagiarism that couldn't be unheard once the songs were compared. Busta Rhymes, during his acceptance speech at the BET Awards, seemed to be addressing figures like Diddy. Diddy has faced accusations from multiple young artists he signed. One of those artists is Maze, known for his opening bars on Big E's Mo Money Mo Problems. Maze left the industry in 1999 to focus on religion, citing issues with Diddy and the Bad Boy record label. In a recent Instagram post, Mays expressed his ongoing struggles with Diddy, mentioning Diddy's Grammy speech about supporting artists and urging him to practice what he preaches. Mays criticized Diddy's past business practices, accusing him of intentionally mistreating and neglecting artists who contributed to his success and the iconic Bad Boy label. <laughs> For example, Mays revealed that Diddy still holds his publishing rights from 24 years ago, for which he was only paid $20,000. This situation made Mays never want to work with Diddy again, as any artist would feel after being robbed and having their reputation tarnished by someone who refuses to follow fair business practices. Mays explained that he stayed silent about this issue until he was financially stable, so it wouldn't seem like he was speaking out of spite. Recently, Mays offered Diddy $2 million to buy back his publishing rights, 
but Diddy demanded that Mays match a higher bid from a European buyer. Otherwise, Mays would have to wait for eight years until the rights revert back to him. Despite the unfair situation, Mays felt pressured to continue performing to avoid looking crazy, even though he was receiving minimal payment. In his song Ride or Die from his 1998 album Volume 2, Hard Knock Life, Jay-Z mentioned Mays and criticized rappers who get taken advantage of in publishing deals. Jay-Z and Diddy attended the pre-Grammy Rock Nation brunch together, where Kevin Hart gave a toast about hard work and success. The notion of black excellence in these circles undermines artists like Kellis and Mays, who initially saw their record deals as a financial blessing, even if they were questionable. According to these artists, this is how many black capitalists operate. They not only exploit talent but also vulnerability. And when they become rich, they use their own rags-to-riches stories to manipulate the narrative. It's a cunning move from Diddy, isn't it? After receiving his award and delivering a powerful speech, Busta Rhymes teamed up with Spliff Star for the Antiope remix scenario. During the performance, Busta Rhymes showcased his talent and attracted the attention of the audience. Several A-list artists joined him on stage, including Scarlet, New York Coil Array, Players, BIA, and Beach Ball. As the performance progressed, Busta Rhymes shifted gears and celebrated dancehall music with Dexta Daps, Shaba Mata, Pot Spice, So Me Like It, Skillabing, and Coffee Ranks. The crowd was hyped as the artists delivered their energetic performances. Busta Rhymes concluded the performance with a powerful statement, expressing his dissatisfaction with Diddy's treatment of young artists. This bold move added another influential voice to the growing criticism directed towards Diddy in the music industry. Busta Rhymes' performance was a spectacle to behold, capturing the attention of everyone in the room. As he took the stage, his presence commanded the spotlight, exuding confidence and charisma. The crowd eagerly anticipated what Busta had in store for them. With a burst of energy, Busta Rhymes began his set, delivering his rapid-fire rhymes with impeccable precision. The crowd was in awe as he effortlessly navigated through complex verses, showcasing his lyrical dexterity and undeniable talent. The atmosphere became electric, with the audience feeding off Busta's infectious energy. But it wasn't just Busta Rhymes who graced the stage that night. Joining him were a plethora of renowned artists, adding their own unique flavors to the performance. Scarlet New York Coil Array, Players, BIA, and Beach Ball brought their distinct styles and voices, amplifying the intensity of the moment. However, halfway through the performance, Busta Rhymes decided to switch gears and pay homage to the vibrant world of dancehall music. The stage transformed into a pulsating celebration of Jamaican rhythms and sounds. Dexta Daps, Shaba Mata, Pot Spice, So Me Like It, Skillabing, and Coffee Ranks joined Busta, infusing the performance with their infectious melodies and captivating dance moves. The crowd erupted with enthusiasm as the dancehall beats filled the air. Busta Rhymes and his fellow artists effortlessly moved to the rhythm, displaying their love and appreciation for the genre. The energy was palpable, with the audience enthusiastically singing along and dancing to the infectious tunes. In the midst of the exhilarating performance, Busta Rhymes seized the moment to send a clear message. With his powerful presence, he subtly addressed the ongoing issue of Diddy's treatment of young artists. By speaking out, Busta added his voice to the growing chorus of individuals who believe in fairness and justice within the music industry. As the performance reached its climactic conclusion, the crowd erupted into thunderous applause, recognizing the immense talent and impact of Busta Rhymes and his fellow artists. It was a moment that resonated with the audience, leaving a lasting impression and igniting conversations about the importance of supporting and uplifting young talent. Buster Rhymes' performance served as a powerful reminder of the influence and reach of music, transcending boundaries and inspiring change. It was a testament to the enduring legacy of artists who use their platforms to advocate for fairness, unity, and artistic freedom. Do you think it's about time he pays for his sins? Let us know in the comment section below. And that's it from us today. Until next time, thank you for watching.